Greetings, Eric Backer from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back and checking out my videos. We're going to today talk about mold allergy or mold sickness. I've had a few people inquire about this over the time, so I thought it, it's about time I made a few videos on mold. This is a topic that's quite um, of quite interest to me because in my 20s I had quite a bad problem with mold and, and fungus in an old house I was living in at the time. It was a, quite an old run-down house and what I didn't know back then is that the roof was leaking. This was, was this was a long time ago, back in the 80s. So when it rained, especially heavily, I'd get up to one or two inches of water in the bedroom, which I'd have to bail out. And the walls would end up having a black kind of a slimy mold high up, you know, towards the ceiling, which I really didn't understand at the time. It was actually quite bad for my health. So I started developing a lot of sickness, a lot of coughs, but especially a lot of skin itching and sneezing and rhinitis and hay fever and allergies and then eventually I got bad bronchitis and I ended up going on antibiotics which spiraled me into a candida infection. So we're going to talk today about what are the signs and symptoms of a typical mold allergy or a mold sickness. So think about it basically like a kind of a yeast or fungus that actually lives in the environment often on a wall, not always visible, sometimes invisible, can be inside the wall, can be in the lining, it can be high up on the roof, it could be low down where the floor is. But generally, if you get a ladder and you poke around and have a really good look, you'll often see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll see little particles of blue, green or black mold. If you poke around, you'll have a look. It could even be in the insulation, you know, in the wall insulation or the ceiling insulation. It's estimated about one in four houses in America They've got some type of a leaky building syndrome. Uh, and I would say that figure would be just as high, if not more, in New Zealand and in many other countries. So let's look at the symptoms. So I've made a list here of different ones. So the common ones are fatigue and weakness, like just feeling worn out, feeling tired, headaches, and also photophobia or light sensitivity. So being outside and finding your lights, you know, quite bright, needing to wear sunglasses. Poor concentration. Poor memory, difficulty finding a word sometimes, or tripping over your own words, thinking you're going out of your mind. I've seen this with some people. Stiffness, joint pain, shortness of breath, sinus congestion. Itchiness in the throat or in the, in the palate, in the upper palate or back of the throat, almost like you want to put your hand in there and scratch, so like an itchiness. Appetite can go up and down, and the body temperature can be in a state of dysregulation as well. You can feel too hot or too cold. And occasionally I've had a patient who I thought had a thyroid dysfunction when in fact was suffering from mold sickness. Uh, of course, we can get a lot of visual disturbances, you know, uh, sore eyes, itchy eyes, say you're rubbing your eyes, it could be blurry vision. Uh, there could be many different types of things like red eyes. Some people even get bloating, abdominal pain, diarrhea or constipation out of it. Um, some, a crazy symptom I've noticed some people get is like static shocks, where they're feeling like electric shocks in the body. Even that has been linked to mold illness. So as you can see, there's a whole raft of signs and symptoms or potential there. Um, so if you have got any of those signs and symptoms, you may want to get your house checked out, especially if you know you've got a mold problem. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video on how actually to detect if you've got a mold problem or not. Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate it.